Um, what I'm working on right now, and I, it's a little bit of an unusual thing, which I love, is a, a fiber fancier called me, contacted me, and asked if she could get four ounces of a fleece that I have that um, we had talked about a little bit in prior conversations, uh, a very nice fine fleece from a Ugilly. And she asked if she could get four ounces from the fleece as one ounce packets, which I do offer, because she's going to be entering the Fine Fleece Shetland Sheep Association's skein contest. She's a lace spinner. So she wanted something that was my finest. Um, and so we went through all my records and stuff and went, came across the fleece from Gilly. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to weigh out four ounces for her. And the fleece is pretty uniform, so they're, it's probably all going to be equally fine. But... Um, going to pull out four ounces and then later on I'm going to pack up one ounce um, parcels of her raw fleece and put those in my Etsy shop. So this is the fleece here and I'm going to, um, I think I'll change the camera angle and you can, I'll just have you watch my hands as I'm working but I also wanted to show you that this is something I do, I keep records on every sheep in our flock, both the ewes and the rams. And in this folder, I keep their registration pedigree. So this is uh, Whispering Pines Gillies. There's a lot of information on here. There's her ear tag, her sire, her dam, who the uh, owners are of both the sire and the dam, the color she's registered as, the marking that she's registered as, and then you see here five degrees of, um, five generations of her pedigree. So when you register your sheep, this is, this is what you get. And then on the back, if we were to sell Gilly, which we're not going to do, but if we were to sell Gilly and transfer her as a registered you, we'd fill out this information on the back. And then the new owners would get this sheet with the, the detail that we provide. Also in her file will be any fiber samples that we would have taken from her. So we took a sample in 2018, I took one in 2019, and her 2020 sample is still with Texas A&M being evaluated. And so that's another thing that we keep and we refer back to these samples a lot. Year over year fleeces will change. So Then I have these cards that I've created that I use to keep records each year and I complete these while I'm skirting the fleeces. Skirting the fleeces means once I get the raw fleece off the sheep, I lay it out on the skirting table and I will pull off the dirty bits around the edge, evaluate the fleece, and this is what I use as the record of that activity. So I have one from 2019 and one from 2020. It's good to have them year over year so you can monitor the progress. One of the things that we're breeding for are fine fleece Shetland ewes that will hold their fine, actually ewes and rams, that will hold their fineness year over year. So it's not uncommon for a lamb fleece to be very fine, but then the yearling or the adult fleece is to fall off. By falling off, we mean they get coarser. That's not a desirable trait. We are breeding for fine fleece Shetlands. So so that's something that we monitor. Gilly is holding up beautifully. I'm really happy with this you. Um, so on the sheet here is her name, the date that I took the record, how old she was when we sheared her, all of her uh, micron data. So we keep track of four key data variables, which would be the average fiber diameter, 22.4. She actually went down from last year, which is pretty great. Standard deviation of 4.6. You add the average fiber diameter and the standard deviation, and that would get what your maximum fiber diameter would be. And anything over 30, you can't, it's, it's, the, you know, that's the assumption is that anything over 30, we, we can't bear to wear it against our skin because of the prickle factor. So she's definitely way underneath that threshold. Um, then the staple length, and then I just check off to make sure that I've taken a photo. Then I take her weight prior to skirting, because I want to know what the full weight of the fleece is. And then I take a weight after skirting, and what that does is that gives me a sense of 
what my output is for that fleece. Now, a lot of the skirtings I'm sending to the mill now because what I've discovered is my skirtings are so nice and still very fine and good crimp that even though they're not as good as the main part of the fleece that's under the coat, they're still very usable. So those sections are getting sent to the mill now as either comb top, roving, or yarn. And then after I do that evaluation, I look at it and I say, you know, is this something that I'm proud to sell to a hand spinner? Would this bring a hand spinner joy, particularly a hand spinner that is maybe more discriminating, that has done a lot of Shetland and is now ready for a fine Shetland? Um, so I make that decision to sell or to process myself or maybe with my older ewes to send along with the skirtings to the mill because once they're nine, ten years old, even though they might have been spectacular like Gilly at a younger age, there is going to be a, a increase in the fiber diameter to make it so that it's not as next to skin soft. All right, so anyways, I just wanted to share that with you. Every you that we had on the farm has a file like this. If we move her and transfer her to another farm, I just put her file in that year she was transferred with all of her records. I keep all the fiber samples. Um, it's just really good information when you're trying to review pedigrees or whatnot. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, move, move the angle of the camera so you can sort of see my process for splitting up a fleece into the one ounce packages. All right, so here is Gilly's fleece in the bag. And one thing, too, that we do just so we can keep track because I just learned about a thing called breed specific yarns, which obviously that's what we offer. We only offer soft Shetland wool, but I also offer you specific yarns. So I keep the card from the U after I shear her and keep it separate. Um, I put the ear tag and the year because there are times when I have not managed to get to a fleece in that, that year, so I'll know that it was uh, last year clip versus this year. And that goes in every single fleece bag that we have, so we know who they are either because we know them from their markings or we've got their ear tag number. All right, so I'm going to just dump this fleece out in here. I'm not very particular with how I fold them and roll them up and stuff. I know there is a method for that. I just don't. At this point in time, I'm sure there'll be a time when I will do that more carefully. Oh, it's just so nice. It's so bouncy and so I did tell you already the AFD, um, I'll make a note of it and write it up on the screen here. So as I'm looking at this fleece, I can tell you right now, these are the two back legs. This is her britch. Here's her little behind. So there's a little bit of dirt here, probably just snuck by me as I was skirting. But I mean, if you're going to be combing or flicking, you can easily pull that out very easily. So there's her britch, which is really nice. I mean, that's, I actually skirted off a lot of her britch. So this is, you know, kind of the beginning of it. This is the back. And then the neck, when the shearer shears, he kind of, he goes up the neck. And then a larger portion of that is on one side, almost like a stole that she would throw around her neck, right? And that's that's this here, and that's the part that's under on the bottom part of her body that's not going to get the dirt and is still under the coat. All of the neck wool that is really dirty, I have removed that, and that is go that went into a pooled bag of fawn neck wool because it's just too dirty to sell. And by dirty, I don't mean dirt. I mean this is a dirty fleece. You're still going to have to wash it. But when I say dirty, I mean it doesn't have a lot of um, little bits and flakes of hay and poop and stuff. I like to just sort of do an inspection of the shearing quality. I've done some discussions about ruing and the benefit of ruing, um, where you don't get the second cuts. Gilly, actually, I've, I'll sh do some footage of her close up. I'll introduce you to her. She would have rued because she's got fi fibers falling off of her now. But we were very fortunate in that she was probably right in the rise when I had her sheared so we don't there's not a lot of second cuts but you can see the clipper marks and stuff the pattern from the clippers 
rude fleeces don't have anything like that. But the rude fleeces aren't as flat as this. They're not as put together because you're plucking each section. But I digress. So this is my outside scale. So I have an inside scale that I use for my clean wool. And then this is my outside scale that I use for bags and dirty wool. So I'll be weighing my bag fleeces in here as well as incrementing out my one ounce. So the rest of this is pretty straightforward. But the only thing I will, <laughs> maybe he doesn't, yeah, I will say is that I am always very careful to ensure that I'm maintaining the lock structure when I'm pulling the one ounce locks out. And I'm also, I also have an eye for what might be one ounce. So, but what I'm going to do real quickly here is just take a quick break and just show you. Skilly. So fine, it's sticking to the... It's really pretty. You're going to get... this. Some of this will come off in, if you're going to flick it or comb it. But that, it will... It, grow by probably half an inch and it's just I mean there's it's probably like a three inch staple so fine so nice and crimpy all right so I'm going to measure out one inch now as I'm looking at this I'm seeing some bits here that um they don't bother me one bit they'll wash out fine but I'm not going to include those in my locks I'll keep those for me to process Just kind of, I'm just going to weigh out a one ounce right now. Just checking to make sure you can see what I'm doing. Every once in a while I tap the scale because it turns off if I leave it to its own devices. Look at that cobwebby. It's a little bit longer staple there. Oh, this lucky girl. You know, one thing I really love is when people come to me and say, I want to make a hap shawl. Can you spin me some wool from these U's and uh, make them this long? And I just love it. I love being involved in the project from that at that level. So that's two and a half ounces. So I'm just going to keep pulling off bits until I get to the required four ounces. So I don't know if I said it in the beginning, but this particular individual is going to be entering the skein contest. Oh, I did say it. Yeah. And she's going to be doing a lace weight. So she needs four ounces raw so that when she washes it, she can get to the, I think it was a one ounce minimum weight. In my last episode, I had a really large fleece on the carding table with, it was Mrs. Hughes. And I've since finished carding that. So it's now all flicked. And, uh, ready for either turning into a bad or I actually might um, offer it as it is. Um, <clears throat> so now what I have on the carding table is a portion of Gilly's fleece. So what happened was I was asked to break out four ounces of Gilly's fleece because it was the next finest that I had in my raw fleece for sale collection. And as I was going through it, um, there were some. There was a section that I kind of had second thoughts about offering as raw fiber because it had good amounts of caked dirt on the tips and just thought about it a little bit and decided that I didn't want to sell that as raw fiber. I'd like it to be a little bit cleaner than that. And um, so what I did was I pulled out stuff that was clean and had nice tips and um, package those in one ounce bags and those are up in the Etsy shop now. But this piece is like about a sixth of her fleece. I'm going to flick this out and I actually have a home for that, this fiber. I'm going to turn it into bats. See just how crimpy it is. The crimp is really fine here. So, 
Here's a pretty good example of a lock from her fleece. And I'm going to just, it's a, okay, let's just say it's two and a half inches with the tips. I'm carded but washed. I'm also going to observe from just feeling it that there's a lovely density to this, this fleece, which is nice to have. I mean, that's an ideal. It's one of the parts of the standard is denseness for a couple reasons. It's to keep, it protects the animal. If their fleece is open, the elements can get at them and they're not going to get the insulating properties. But from a fiber farmer point of view, the more fiber I can get per inch, the better as an um, output from the feed and the care that we put into the U. It's just a way of thinking about it. All right, so I have carded it and it is now, I would say it's four inches unstretched. Just kind of get it so it's not in that triangle shape. It's almost four inches unstretched. And then as I expand it, I'm getting another quarter of an inch to a half of an inch. And it just feels so silky and lovely. So like I said, this is from Gilly. Now Gilly is a fawn cat mugget, which means that she's got the dark perimeter wool and she's predominantly the lighter fawn color. It looks white here, but when you spin it up, it's going to be very creamy with little flecks of brown, like a just a beautiful heathery oatmeal. Um, but I did um, pull from this small selection of her fleece a more, some of the brown from around her, um, probably down the side. It also possibly could be on the bottom part of her neck. I don't remember where I pulled it from. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of show you this, what I'm working on, and, and um, just, it's the actually the, the finest micron of the raw fleeces that I had left, and that was why it was selected for the four ounce client because she's joined, entering the um, Fine Fleece Shetland Sheep Association skein contest and she wants lace weight so she needed the finest that I could offer. So, oh I just love this wool. Gilly is um, four. was Nordic, 2018 was NPR, 2017 was Game of Thrones, so she's three. And as we saw when we were looking at her fleece on the screening table, her fineness has held. I mean, it says it went down, but there's, you know, all sorts of error involved with micron data. So, I mean, I wouldn't, it's possible she went down and got finer. She did have a a lamb this year, and that could cause her to go a little finer. It's really, really, really pretty. I'm going to work on my close-ups because it's so important that that's eh, pretty good that you can see the character. One thing I forgot to talk about was, um, you know, after you flick it, the dirt just sort of goes away. So that's that's the side that had the dirt. And here is some of the dirty tips, which <laughs> wouldn't bother me, but. It's okay, I have plenty of fleeces that don't exhibit this, so I, I don't mind taking it and pulling it. I'm glad I actually reviewed it and pulled it before. Um, but yeah, so after flicking it, nice and clean. And you know, even if there is, you know, 
residual dirt on the tips there once you knit it and wash the yarn that'll come out too so just this easel here is what I we don't have high-speed internet where we are, so I have to watch all of my um, podcasts and YouTube videos on my mobile phone, and so I prop it up there to watch. Isn't that pathetic? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh well, that's country living. This is Gilly. Um, so she, as I said, on the carding table is a fawn cat mugget. So she's got those pretty badger eyes and darker wool around the belly down the neck, which ends up being the perimeter of the fleece. So she's um, not really excited about this quick demo, but she's out of uh, Treviso, who was her mother. And Treviso was a really fine fawn cat mugget with a really nice temperament. And her sire is uh, nitro and he was more it with spots. One of the things about Gilly um, that I wish this year I'd have rooed her, I think you can sort of see that she has the the rooing trait here. And um, I think I, I would have been able to get, you know, I did the measurement of her fleece on the carding table. I probably would have been able to get another, a good quarter of an inch from her. She is uh, 2017 new. And um, that was the year I used the naming convention of Game of Thrones, and they don't really like base their names on any type of characteristics they exhibit when they're that young as lambs, but she's sort of grown into the name because as a first time mother, she's doing a really great job, and her lamb is right there, actually, is one of my favorite ones. She's really friendly, and it's really good size, and it's doing really well. So, so I'm really proud of the Gilly as a, her performance as a mother and just her really gentle temperament. It's interesting to me that she's got one of our finer fleeces because <clears throat> I always go gravitate towards the gray and maybe the more flashy stuff. And you know, she's got a modest coloring and stuff, but she's a great you and really happy to have her in our flock. So I just wanted to uh, get a chance to meet her. <laughs> you wanna get back in there? So a quick update on my two bottle lambs. They're eating grass, as you can see, which is a big step in their development. And they come in every night with big full bellies. They are off with milk, and I'm every once in a while supplementing their water with electrolytes. But they're doing really good. It's Friday night and uh, I'm in the wool cave. I've got about 45 minutes before I'm going to go out and do chores tonight. And so I wanted to just um, show you my progress on Edith and how I use the, the Hansen spinner to ply. I ply all of my two ply yarns on the Hansen e spinner and um, there's a pedal to power it on and power it off. There's a speed dial and then here is the, there's a tension knob like the brake band tension knob like you would have on your brake right wheel. I've had this spinner for five years. The only thing is I, um, I don't use this when I do the chain plying and that's just because I like to have more control over the speed. Um, when I chain ply, I, it's always because I'm doing a self-striping yarn, so I want to be able to have that 
slowing down when it's time for me to bring in the new color. And I'll demonstrate that at some point here. But anyways, I do that on my wheel. The Lazy Kate that I'm using is what I got with my Magicraft Rose back in 2001. They've really modified this a lot. It still has the pretty signature rose carved on the side. Um, and then I just found out, I realized there was these um, shafts that came with my carter when I got it that I guess I'm supposed to be using, but I just use pencils for my, and I've been using these same pencils for years. I'm always like repurposing things and making do, so. So you can see I'm almost at the end, but I just, like I said, I did want to give you this as part of the steps for Edith, because I think my last episode I was spinning her singles. Hopefully you can see on the bobbin just how beautiful and rich her color is. She stayed a really nice black, which is uh, a good trait for the Shetlands. So once I finish this skein, this will be the third skein from her fleece. I'll wind it on the Nitty Knotty, tie it up, and then tomorrow I'm going to wash it with the other skeins that I've completed. And then I'll swack it good, and then I'll hang it out to dry, and then once it's dry, then I'll count the strands so I can figure out what the yardage is based on how I know my yarn loops around my Nitty Knotty. When I supply yarn for sale, I always give the weight in ounces and the length in yards. And um, I don't provide WPI and I also don't do the yarn type, whether it's a DK or a sport. And the only reason for that is I just don't have a lot of confidence. I don't really know how to do that or I don't really know what it means. Um, so would really love to get somebody to maybe either point me in the direction of a good resource that helps me with that or maybe you can explain that to me but I really don't know how to do that so uh, another thing that I do when I reach the end of my bobbin whichever bobbin I complete first sometimes I'll um, unwind the bobbin that has a little bit of extra and I'll finish it off by pulling it out of a yarn ball. But another thing I started to do is I just leave that extra on the bobbin and then after my bobbins get built up after a few fleeces then that's another self-striping yarn opportunity that I'll take advantage of and I'll do the chain plying with those colors and it's a more of a random not carefully measured out like my self-striping yarns that I do for the Pioneer Glove pattern. And so it's, I've gotten some really cool results. I'll take a picture of one of the hats that I made. And I like the three-ply with my yarn, too, because it's really nice and de dense, I guess I would say. Um, I use this hook as a guide to take on some of the tension just because I was starting to get a raw spot on my finger from doing it with my hand. So this helps with that, it's really the only reason I use this. The bobbins are making a little bit of a whining noise on the pencils. I probably should use those metal bars that came with the wheel, but honestly, I've had the wheel for, what, almost 20 years, and it's just now, I just now realized that those shafts came with it for the easy cake. Takes me a while to catch on. I don't do any ma maintenance or anything on this Hanson spinner. I just kind of brush it off. Sometimes it gets a little bit of dirt from the yarn. But I haven't really ever had to do anything with it. It's, it's a pretty solid piece of equipment. So here I am. I'm kind of coming to the end. You can see in the bobbin. This one closest to me. There's a little bit of a fawn single on there. So like I said, I left that on there. And then um, that'll become a self-striping yarn. Another thing I'm going to say is I am by no means like a perfect spinner. You can see that big blob right there. I'm going to just let that go in there. And, um, you know, it's hand-spun yarn. It's not going to be perfect. And I, you know, explain that to people. 
and everybody is to my face anyways to they you know they're pretty comfortable with it and understand that um, after you wash it it blooms quite a lot is what I've been told I never knew what the word bloom meant but someone explained that to me recently and so stuff like that sort of gets lost in the mix So that's now ready to get put on the lid now. I have to remove the brake band. Anytime I'm not going to be using the ink spinner, like if I'm in the midst of a project, I always unplug the power. I have this nightmare that like something like a mouse or something <laughs> would walk on the pad and start the spinner at like three o'clock in the morning and just ruin all my hard work. But anyway, so that is that helps. That is my beautiful, beautiful rich black and very soft yarn from my Edith. So then once I wind that on the nitty knotty, I just kick this table away. This little stool also is what I use to hold my flick blocks. And I'll put the e-spinner away, put the lazy cake away, and I'll bring out the wheel for my next fleece that I'm going to work on. I got a request to pick my best white fleece for a spinner that I worked with before with raw fleeces. And so what I thought I would do was share with you my judging of my own fleeces, I guess, to see which one I would pick um, as the best. So the only two I have left now are from Our Use, Whispering Pines Ophabia and Whispering Pines Soraya. And yeah, they were from our NPR year. They're twin sisters. And they both produced beautiful fleeces for us. Um, I am very guilty of mixing them up so one of them had lambs this year. One of them had a twin ewe ram lambs. I think it was Ophabia, but again, like I said, I very I struggle a little bit with trying to keep them separated. So this is Ophabia's fleece, and I'm gonna set this here. I'm just gonna take up the part. I'm a little bit nervous about mixing them up. So, Ophabia. So I looked at her fleece June 1st of this year. She was two years old when we sheared her, so these are both two-year-old fleeces. Her AFD was 25 and her standard deviation was 4. So she's like right under the 30 micron threshold for next to skin softness, but I just have my hand on it and it just really feels very nice. So spinning fineness is 24. The weight on her fleece after I skirted it is 25 ounces. So I made a note on her card that I was not excited about the shearing quality. Which I, don't, I do know that when I look at her out there, I can see clumps that I would like to brew off. I'm just going to open this up. Oh man, it's nice. I'm always very, I don't know how to, I don't know what the word is to use here. As a person that washes and processes and spins my own fleeces, when I'm skirting, I'm always taking off the minimal amount because for me, I want to have as much from that U as I can get. So it's a different perspective when I'm carding for clients or for shows, carding, when I'm skirting for clients or shows, I get a lot more aggressive and watch some wool that I perceive as being very, very nice going into the bin, which is why I think I've said before, I will take those skirtings now and send them to the mill as mill processed wool because 
I just think it's they're still very good. Like here's some clumps here. I have a little bit of hay. But why wouldn't you want that? Beautiful wool. After you wash it and comb it or flick it or whatever your processing method is, it's going to be very nice. So, I mean, I'm looking at the top here. It's just beautiful. It's very consistent. I'm seeing, you know, really nice staple length. It feels really nice. The tips aren't matted or anything from the coat, which is, to me, I don't really mind, but if I were sending this out to somebody, that might be a factor that's important to them. Now what I'm going to do is look at the shearing quality, so I'm going to flip it over. And here's where I can see an issue that I would mark as a fault on this fleece, and that is, these are called second cuts, and um, actually what this is, is the uh, result of shearing her after she has hit the rise. So there's a point in the fleece that the, there's a weak spot and so you're going to have these little bits that are going to become waste because my assumption is you're going to either flick or comb this fleece. So that's one little mark against it. And like I said, I did make a note here that I wasn't excited about the shearing quality and that I'll probably rue her next year. For me, it's, this fleece is excellent. And I, for me, that's not a big flaw because I flick everything. I mean, the staple length, just remarkable. Somewhat bolder crimp. So it's a little departure from my I mean it's, a, it's hardly that much different from what we're really breeding for and really nice this will be a fun fleece to spin I already forgot who it was okay so that was Ophavia I'm just going to set her aside. I would be overjoyed to get that place to be able to work on it. So I'm going to put that back in her folder with all her other records and tuck that under. So the next one that I have available to sell as a full raw fleece is Soraya. She's named after Soraya Sir Hardy Nelson. I've always loved the names of the NPR correspondents, particularly of females. All right, so her AFD is slightly higher. Um, if I add her AFD and SD together, it's going to be it's going to exceed the 30 micron threshold for next to skin softness based on the micron results we got for this year, which is really unusual for our flock. To the point where we're sort of questioning. The results here because it just doesn't make sense to us but we're gonna go with it um, nice staple length got an 80 millimeter staple length and the weight is higher than uh, Ophabia's so I got a 33 ounce post skirted weight on this one and I made a note here that the, the skirting the shearing quality was was good so I was happy with the shearing quality and that is my bottle lamp in the barn she thinks Anytime she hears my voice, she thinks it's time to eat. Okay. Seeing, I'm seeing some, I mean, I'm seeing some beautiful cobweb style crimp on this one. Oh, and it's really dense, which is going to explain the weight. So we bred both of them, and I th I'm almost positive Soraya was open, you know, Fabia. Oh, I can already tell you that I'm going to pick this fleece. I like the density. I'll do a close-up video of them comparing them. 
I've talked about density before. Density is good for so many reasons. Number one, um, the effort you're going to put into flicking a lock, you're going to get more wool. Number two, it's better for the U because she's going to be better insulated against both hot and cold. And it's an output factor as well. So, you know, you put a, the same amount of effort into two U's. If you get more density off the same size U, you're going to get more wool. And that's, why wouldn't you want that? Oh, I'm really enchanted with this fleece. And I graded the, oh boy, I graded the shearing quality. <laughs> it's very good, and it is. I mean, she, she must have just been perfectly at the rise. Um, oh man, I want to keep this one for me. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna pull out a lock. Oh baby, just so nice. So, having done this, I am going to, with very sincere confidence, out of two very beautiful fleeces, I'm going to recommend this um, Soraya's fleece for my, my friend that's looking for a beautiful white fleece. So, Fabia is the one that had the lamb. Um, really pretty glistening lock structure. Um, like I said, though, slight issue with the fact that she, we sheared her after the rise, so there's going to be some bits that will need to get carted out. Um, I did price this a little bit lower than Soraya's, and I, was, I read that on the card after I completed the last shot. So in recognition of the fact that, you know, when you're going to have some waste here, it's... But that's like the only flaw with this fleece. Great lock structure, real consistent. I'm just really happy with these U's. So yeah, so that's Ophabia. So she's the one that had the twin lambs. Um, her f micron is lower, and it's kind of that's a, a theme I'm picking up on. I talked about Gilly's numbers being lower this year than last year, but she had a lamb this year. So something to do with um, nutrition, making the fibers finer, something to think about. And then here's Soraya, uh, has a higher AFD, but she wouldn't, I just, I don't want to be distracted by that. Really nice staple length and um, density. I don't want to keep pulling locks out because it's, you know, this is going to somebody that maybe wants to keep. And this just, look at that. Really happy with this too. It's just really, I oh, just feel the life in this fleece. It's alive. Oh my god, I just want to roll up in it. 